as computing has matured over the last 20 years or so, our relationship with technology has changed fundamentally. Today, we no longer have to ask the question, how do I do this with my computer? Instead, we can ask, what shall I do with my computer today? And in this short talk, Professor Ludger Hovestadt from the Chair of Digital Architectonics at ETH Zurich explains what this means for architecture and why this leads us to think of today as an era of a digital renaissance. Hello, what is computing today? If you're looking for help or answers on how to solve problems with computers, I think you're on the wrong track. If you look around, the world is full of solutions. What had been complicated 10 years ago, what had been precious 5 years ago, 2 years ago, it's at the fingertip today. So the world is a fulcrum of solutions. And especially with AI, in principle, all problems are solved. So the key question then, and this is a very architectural question, what to do then with computing? And this turn from the how to the what is not an easy one. And I think it's comparable to the Copernican revolution in the Renaissance. And therefore, we want to talk about a digital Renaissance today. And there are a lot of biases. Me, for example, it took more than 50 years to realize, not to understand, to realize that a tree is growing from the air and the sun. So the CO2, all the substance, is from the CO2 of the air. It's not from the ground. It's not heavy. It's fantastic. So it's not the origin of a seed unfolding certain, along certain rules and, and so on. It's just the fantastic of saying, I want to be a tree, and taking it from out the air. This is not of gravitation. So this is a notion of space we should learn to talk about. And this is what we're doing with the discussions around gender or environment today. And there have been <coughs> uh, three diff two different uh, notions of space or scales of space uh, we know from our uh, history. They had been uh, with antiqu antiquity in Greek. Um, there had been the notion of space of the uh, rational numbers. And this space is of light. So it's not gravity, light. And this light had been white. So therefore the Greek temples is proportioning of white light. Whereas Renaissance opened up the new scale of space around the real numbers. And there the light got colorful. So Renaissance is proportioning space of colors, colored light. You can look it up, how it is articulated in all details with the Nastas there. And our hypothesis now, since 1900, with the complex numbers of today, we have a scale of space which is imaginary, which is of images, not white, not of colors, but of images. And this is the digital real. So the turn towards a new scale of space is not simple. So look, for example, at the uh, Gothic uh, cathedrals and their building huts. Then you are in the flow of the white light in the traditions of classical architecture. And it's heavy, it's gravitational. And then with the Renaissance masters, with these drawings in open space, turning the whole world about an, uh, uh, a perspective point, they made these drawings, they go to antiquity, look for the proportions of the old temples, and they sell drawings before even touching a stone. And this is a big challenge for the classical architecture of that time, and they lost. And, uh, that's a fantastic of architecture proportioning space of a certain time. And I think with the digital model of today, it's the same. Just this. Proportioning imaginary space. And classical architecture we are all taught in, 
is not able to compete with it because they are in light of color, not of images. And the images can play any color, of course. This is what we see with all the fakes all around. So therefore we need to cultivate our digital models. To learn that is not complicated at all. Like the perspective drawing, if you once got it, it's, it's, it's there. Uh, you just have, like, like with swimming, you have to be patient and you have to trust that it is working. And after a while you are a swimmer and you can look at the world with new eyes. You see the imaginary picture of the world. And you see that all disciplines are the same. And you can play the humanistic story that you can talk about the world in all facets, not in a disciplinary narrow-minded, uh, specialized uh, perspective. It's very beautiful like that. So, and this I think, learning that, understanding that, asking the what instead of the how, this is a very noble architectural question of today. And then you can speak up, like for example, Pico de Mirandola in Renaissance, as a young man of 23, he took the perspective towards the whole world and then talk, talking about all religions and all details, all science and 900 theses about the world as a single educated, literate person. I think this is what we are heading to and what we are looking for for today. Thanks.